Hello, in this lecture, we're going to define the term of adjusting entry. According to Fundamental Accounting Principles, WOW 22nd edition, the definition of adjusting entry is journal entry at the end of an accounting period to bring an asset or liability account to its proper amount and update the related expense and revenue account. Let's break that down a bit. We are talking about an adjusting entry, which is still a journal entry. So we have the typical journal entry, which is going to have at least one debit and at least one credit and what must remain in balance. The thing that sets this apart is it's going to be at the end of the accounting period. The end of the accounting period typically being the end of the year or the end of the month. Why? Because that's when we're going to make the financial statements. And therefore, we want to make everything correct on an accrual basis as of that point in time. How do we do that? We typically bring the asset accounts and liability accounts to their proper amount in accordance with an accrual basis, and then we adjust to the related expense and revenue accounts. What that means is that the adjusting accounts are usually going to have at least one balance sheet account that's going to be affected and one income sta statement account that will be affected. We often identify them by the balance sheet account that we're going to have to adjust. For example, if we take a look at our trial balance here, some typical accounts that would need to be adjusted in the adjusting process would include the supplies account. Typically, we will set up a supplies oftentimes to need an adjusting entry at the end, meaning like inventory, we're basically going to buy the supplies, put them on the books as an asset rather than an expense, count the supplies at the end of the time period, and then record the expense related to what has been used, reducing the asset. Therefore, we're going to have to reduce the asset and record the related expense. We could have something like insurance expense. This is another one which almost always needs an adjusting entry because we're going to set up the system once again to record the insurance expense payment as an asset rather than insurance expense. So when we make the payment, it's going to be recorded to prepaid insurance rather than insurance expense. Then at the end of the time period, we're going to say, okay, how much of the policy has been expired? And we're going to have to reduce the prepaid insurance by the amount of the insurance policy that has then been expired and record the related expense, insurance expense. And then we have accumulated depreciation. That's going to be another typical transaction adjusting entry we're going to have to make. So we're going to have something like equipment, the accumulated depreciation being the deterioration or at least the allocation of cost over the useful life of that equipment. So that journal entry is going to be a credit to accumulated depreciation, which is basically reducing the book value of the equipment, reducing assets as a whole and then record the related uh, expense, which is depreciation expense, the reduction in value of the equipment. And then we have the accumulated, um, we have wages payable, a liability. So there's gonna be a liability account for the fact that wages oftentimes are gonna be recorded just typically on a more of a cash basis, just from logistics purposes, that makes more sense. So we're gonna set up the system to do that and rely on the adjusting process to make any needed adjustments at the end of the time period. For example, as of the end of the time period, we may have work that has been done, but that will not be paid until the next uh, time period. So for example, if 1231 is the cutoff, we may have done work before 1231, it then gets paid next year. Well, we need to bring that expense into this year and we need to record the related liability that is owed under an accrual basis as of the cutoff date. Last example that we will have is going to be uh, unearned revenue. This one is going to be the fact that we got paid before we did the work. This is not always typical of every type of business. That's why this one's a, sometimes more confusing. But in this case, if we did landscaping, we might have gotten a deposit before we did the work. We might have gotten the money before we did the work. We should record that as a liability when we get the money because we have not yet earned it. Then we're going to have to determine how much we earned in the adjusting process. And we're going to have to reduce the liability and record the related revenue in this case. Again, not all businesses will have a security deposit, but we can think about the types of businesses that might. We might have, uh, if we get rent, if we're renting uh, equipment or renting a building, we might ask for a security deposit up front. That money we get up front is a type of unearned revenue. Or we could think of things like a concert or something like that, meaning we get paid before we provide the concert. What that would mean is that we really have unearned revenue until we provide the concert and the thing that's interesting about this is that unearned revenue means that we're not paying something it's a liability but it doesn't really represent cash that we're going to have to pay in the future hopefully what happens is it represents work that we're going to have to do in that case we'd have to have the concert if we don't have the concert then we're going to have to pay the cash back most likely uh, but we're typically going to pay with the service in terms of unearned revenue and then record the adjustment